Oh, Lamont, this is really fun. And I thought you might enjoy it, Margot. When you asked me to come to an exhibit at the Hall of Science, I began trying to think of fast excuses about sick grandmothers. Oh, really? Yes. I pictured a lot of stuffy old men mumbling in their beards about relativity or something. I see. <laughs> this is really exciting. Look, what's that over there? Well, they have a sign-up. Let's find out. All right. Yeah, demonstrating the scientific marvel of the age. The mechanical man. Mechanical man? Mm, that's what it says. It walks, talks, answers questions. Although made of metal, it can duplicate many things that man can do. <laughs> oh, come on, Margot, we can't miss this. Oh, Lamont, you've seen robots before. Yes, but you never know when one may be different, more advanced. You well, know. I'd like to bet this one's no different from the rest. Well, you I can. beg your pardon. I, oh. I couldn't help overhearing what you were saying just now. Uh, I hope that you'll forgive my intruding, but I think if you do go in, you'll find that this robot is entirely different from any that you've seen before. Oh, is it really? You yes. seem to know quite a lot about it. Well, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, uh, well, that is... Uh, you see, I invented it and built it myself. Oh, really? I know I shouldn't be out here in front talking to perfect strangers about my invention, but... You see, I'm very enthusiastic about it. Well, naturally. Come well, on, George. Well, They're waiting for you to start the demonstration. Oh, well, of course, dear. Uh, this is my wife, Mr. Uh, uh, Cranston is the name. And this is Miss Margot Lane. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? My name is Alton. Mr. Alton? Well, uh, aren't you coming in to watch? Oh, yes, certainly. I was trying to persuade Mr. Cranston to go in anyway. Wasn't I, Lamont? Why, of course. Oh, uh, come right this way, please. Oh, what a little liar you are, Margot. Yes, I know. Isn't it awful? Well, if you'll come through this side door with me, I'll see that you get a good place to watch the demonstration. Why, Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. And so, of course, oh, here he is now, ladies and gentlemen. I'd now like to present the inventor of this mechanical man, Mr. George Alton. Mr. Alton, would you please step up here on the platform? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh... Before I proceed with the demonstration, I'd like to tell you a little about this invention of mine. This uh, galvanized gargantua <laughs> is, constructed, is constructed on an entirely new principle. He is electrically controlled and can be operated by this small box here on the table. But he also responds to commands in the mind of the operator rather than to certain sounds of the human voice as has heretofore been the method of operation. Now, I'll bring out the big fellow and give you a demonstration which I think will convince you that I have not exaggerated in any way. Oh, Lamont, do you think such a thing is possible? Well, in the realm of science these days, Margot, anything is possible. I suppose so. Lamont, don't you know it's rude to stare? Oh, was I staring? I... I'm sorry. That man over there in the crowd interests me. Who? The hunchback? Yes. You notice anything peculiar about him? Peculiar? Yes, I... I'm speaking of his size. Size? What do you mean? Have you ever seen a hunchback so tall? Why, no, I don't believe I have. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet my mechanical man, whom I have named Henry. Uh, roll it right out here, if you please. Well, speaking of being tall, look at that robot, Lamont. He must be at least ten feet high. That's right. I'm now going to order Henry to step down from this little platform that he's standing on. Now, you will notice that I don't give him any particular word. I just think the command, and Henry will obey. Now, watch. Lamont, look! That thing stepped right down off the platform just as he said it would. Yes. I will now ask Henry to answer a few questions. Henry, how much is two and two? Oh. Seven and eight. Fifteen. That's right. Now, in case you think these answers are previously arranged, I'll ask anybody in the audience to ask Henry some question which he will answer. Hey, I'll ask him, uh, uh, what time is it? A eat 20, A eat p.m. That's right. Why, Lamont, this is weird. How do you think he does it? Lamont, you're not listening. Stop staring at that hunchback. Oh. I'm sorry, Margot. I was watching his expression. 
Just look at him. Why, his face is all contorted in pain. Not pain, Margot. Hate. Hate? Why? Well, unless I miss my guess, it's hate for your little inventor, Mr. Alton. Now, I'll ask Henry to walk among you and pick up various objects which I will call out from the platform. Oh, oh, please, no, 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 please, 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 ladies and gentlemen, what? don't be alarmed. Henry is perfectly amiable and obeys my orders implicitly. He wouldn't harm a fly. Well, that may be so, but if that two-legged tank's going to walk around here among us, brother, I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very sorry to lose you, sir. I guess I'll have to show you that Henry is perfectly harmless. Lamont, if Henry toddles this way, harmless or not, you'll find me joining the parade to the exit. Margo. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please. Now, you see the young lady sitting on the chair at the other end of the platform. That is my wife, who is not afraid of Henry. Therefore, I am going to ask him to walk over, pick her up in his arms, and carry her back to me. And you will find that she is none the worse for the experience. All right, Henry. You know what I want you to do. She has more nerve than I have. Well, that robot is almost human in its reactions, Margo. That's right, Henry. Look. That creature is picking Mrs. Alden up out of the chair. Oh, she looks so small and helpless. Come on, I'm afraid. Mm. I don't know why you should be frightened, Margot. Probably done this hundreds of times. See how he holds her in his arms? That's what he's trained to do. <laughs> and now he walks with her. Well, look, Lamont. The robot has stopped. Yes. Good Lord. No, Henry. No. <gasps> Mrs. Orton is struggling to get down. Put her down. Put her down this minute. Margot, something's gone wrong. The machine is closing his arms about her. He'll crush her. Stop it, Sam. Put her down! Put her down! You're killing her! Stop! Oh, my God! Jim, I've simply got to get out of here. Darling, the police have ordered us to stay here. Lamont, how do you suppose it could have happened? I don't know, Margot. I don't like it. What do you mean? There's something behind all this. Something sinister. Something perhaps for the shadow to investigate? Margot, please don't ever mention that name in public. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure no one could have overheard. You think so? Look behind you. Wait, it's the hunchback. He wasn't there a minute ago. But I'm sure he didn't hear me. I hope not. Lamont, look, the mechanical man, it's moving. Yeah, so it is. Its mouth is open. It's going to speak. <laughs> Shadow must die. Oh, Lamont. Well, I'll be... Lamont, what does it mean? I haven't the faintest idea. Let me go. Let me go, I tell you. Let Mr. Alden, the doctor said... I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what anybody said. I've got to do this before it's too late. Please, Mr. Alden. Let go. Oh, no, Lamont. The inventor's going up to the robot. What's he going to do? Smashing his invention a bit. The shock has put him out of his head. Margot... We've got to get that boy out of here. Drive a little slow, Margo. I think he's going to sleep. Oh, Lamont, the poor fellow. Yes. I imagine that outburst when he broke the machine relieved the nervous tension. He seems relaxed enough now. What a shock it must have been to him to see his wife killed in such a horrible accident. Yes. If it was an accident. Then you think it was murder. I don't know, Margot. I, I really don't know. Look, Lamont. Alton's eyes are opening. I think he's waking up. Well, where, where am I? What, what's happened? We're just taking you to a place where you can get some rest. Well, oh, I see. My wife. My poor wife. Easy now. Easy. Mr. Alton, you've got to help yourself at this point. Myself? What does it matter about me? I... Mr. Alton, do you have any enemies? Anyone who might be jealous of you or your invention? Enemies? No, no. I... Well, unless Dr. Zaruga... Dr. Zaruga? Who's he? Well, 
He's an inventor. He devised a radio-controlled incendiary bomb which was turned down by the Army a year ago. It was too frightful a weapon to use even in modern warfare. Well, what has Dr. Zaruga got to do with you? What? Well, uh, at the time the Board of Science accepted my invention for display, they turned down the robot invented by Dr. Zaruga. He was furious and... Oh, what does it matter now? What does anything matter? I... Why was Dr. Zaruga furious? He felt that he was being discriminated against in favor of others whose inventions were not as good as his. He made a scene about it, then went back to his laboratory next to mine on Providence Street and locked himself in. He wouldn't see anyone for days. Oh, I see. Uh, one more question, Mr. Alton. Mm. This Dr. Zaruga, is he a hunchback? No. No, I... I... I believe he was at one time a high military officer in some European army. He was distinguished by his military bearing and piercing black eyes. Why do you ask? Oh, just an idea. I guess it wasn't a very good idea. Margot, see that car coming? Get over to the right-hand side of the road, Mom. Lamont, something's wrong with the steering wheel. What? I can't control the car. Well, put on the brakes, quick. I, I can't. The controls are locked. Margot, you've got Look to Look out, we're going to crash. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Yoon, how do you think Mr. Cranston's going to live, sir? Why, oh, of course, Alan, of course he's going to live. Takes more than a simple automobile smash up to permanently damage a man with a physique of Lamar Cranston. Yes. Even if he has been unconscious for 24 hours. Yes, I hope so, sir. When Mr. Cranston comes to Alan, see that he stays in bed and keeps those bandages on his arm. Uh, yes, a very good, Doctor. In bed, with bandages on arm. I'll do my best, sir. Uh, good night, sir. Good night. Bed. Bandages on arm. Oh, dear. I'd better write it down so I shan't forget it. Uh, oh, oh, it's coming too. Mr. Cranston, sir. Uh, uh, Alan, what happened? What am I doing here in bed, wrapped up in bandages like a Christmas package? Well, don't you remember, sir? You've been unconscious for 24 hours. Well, I've been unconscious for 24 hours. How could I remember? Well, uh, yes, sir. Uh, quite so, sir. Well, what happened? How did I get here? Uh, you're in bed, sir. Uh, let me see now. Oh, yes, keep in bed. Bandage is on. Keep in bed, bandage Oh, stop on. mumbling. How did I get here? Why, well, you were in an automobile accident, sir. Yesterday, your car ran off the road and overturned in a ditch. Automobile accident? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, 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 of course. And the others? How about the others? If you're referring to the young gentleman who was apparently riding in the car with you, sir, I'm, I'm afraid, well, that is... Dead? Yes, sir. His neck was broken in the cross. Oh. What about Miss Lane? Miss Lane? Yes, Miss Lane, you idiot. What about her? What happened to her? Was Miss Lane riding with you in the car? Was Miss Lane riding... Alan, what happened to Miss Lane? Speak up. Well, I, I don't know, sir. There was no sign of her at the scene of the accident. The, the police just reported finding you and the other gentleman. Alan, give me my clothes. I'm getting up. But, sir, the doctor said in bed... Took blazes with the doctor. But... I've got to find out what happened to Miss... Mr. Cranston, if you go out now in the condition you're in, I, I shan't be responsible. You're, you're just flying in the face of Providence. Providence, that's it. That's it, Alan. Providence Street. It's a wild hunch, but it may be a good one. Now, hurry, man. Give me my clothes at once. Oh, it's you. Yes, my dear. Dr. Zaruga, your humble self. You are hoping for someone else, eh? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do, my dear Miss Lane. Why do you keep me here, locked in your laboratory? <laughs> Why don't you let me go? <laughs> oh, you fiend. You inhuman fiend. Inhuman? Perhaps, uh, perhaps my character deceives you? I think you are being confused by my appearance. My uh, hunchback. Oh. Why, well, you're not... No. That hump on my back contains the electrical equipment by which I not only control my own inventions... Those are other inventors, who unfortunately are not as brilliant as I am. Then you're not a cripple. No. No, I tricked them all. Uh, silly fools. They wouldn't look at my inventions. So I caused your car to crash off the road, killing that little upstart orphan. I made his robot run amok. I forced it to kill his wife. Oh, uh, you... No, what do you think of me? I think you're a madman. A maniac. Oh, that mm. poor girl. Seeing her crushed like that. Oh, you murderer. Uh, you still don't believe I'm the greatest inventor the world has ever seen. But I'll show you. What are you going to do? Why are you keeping me here? Because, Miss Lane, 
Hey, Elder, I hope you make some reference to the shadow. The shadow? Yeah. You see, I have always wanted to meet the shadow. Meet him on my own grounds. Because the shadow is the only man who could possibly ever unmask me. I thought perhaps if you disappeared... The shadow might try to rescue you. Oh, no. But I see I overestimated his powers. The shadow has not appeared. Therefore, Miss Lane, I am going to slightly alter my plans. I am going to give you a treat. What? What do you mean? I am going to demonstrate for you a robot I have invented. When you have seen it, I think you will admit that a terrible injustice has been done me. No. No. You will see it. Of course, you may not survive the demonstration. Oh, no. But that can't be helped. As a matter of fact, it's just as well. You know too much about me. Oh, stop it. Stop taunting me. I keep it in a secret compartment. I open this pan. Oh. <laughs> and there it is. Oh, how ghastly. I admit it is not a pretty sight. You see, my dear, your little friend often built his robot for constructive uses to benefit mankind. Mine is for destruction, a weapon for war. Imagine a regiment of robots like this marching against flesh and blood men. Oh, <laughs> horrible. And now, I will show you how he works. Robert, step forward three paces. Oh, oh no. No, don't. Please. Now, I want you to go to that girl. No. Pick her up. But delicately. No, please, please. Delicately. I want her to see how gentle you can be. First. Now. No. Oh, no. No, don't let her come near me. No. Help. Help. Useless, my dear. The place is sound, bro. Don't waste your breath trying to run away. The robot is so devised that electrically he can detect a living person. We will follow him impeccably until he catches up. Or until I give the command to start. Watch. Stop, robot. Let me out of here. Very well. Oh, I'll please. open the laboratory door. Please, sir. Just run over the whole house if you like. The robot will follow you until he tracks you down. Oh, beast. <laughs> All right, my dear. Now, the stand still. It will be over very quickly. Walk, Robert. No. No! Now, Robert, pick her up in your arms. No! That's it. Take me down! Take me down! I do not like to be held in his arms. He's hurting me! Stop him! Stop him! Do not worry. He won't crush you yet. First, he will just stop hold you to your useless embrace. She's faint. <laughs> Let her down, Robert. Later. Later you will hold her again. <laughs> there isn't going to be any later, Dr. Zaruga. The shop. Oh. You did come after all. I'm looking forward to this meeting. Just you and I in my laboratory. You expected me then? Yes, that's like at the girl here. I knew that you would come to us. I see. Very clever of you. I've been waiting to meet you for a long time, Shadow. Meet you and test my powers against yours. Just what are your powers, Aruga? <laughs> I am the greatest inventor in the world. I have the greatest mind in the world. That's a modest estimate. You doubt me, then? Perhaps when we are finished, you will think differently? Finished? With what? You will find out. You see that, Robert? He is my servant, my slave, obedient to my every command. He is not bound by human limitations. He can see you, Shadow. He can see you. Wherever you are in this room, he will find you. When he does, I think you know what the result will be. What? You will be crushed. Crushed to bits in his arms. You and the young lady, too. Dr. Zaruga, you've chosen a dangerous game. But let me warn you. Two can play it, remember? You can't talk yourself out of this, Shadow. Robert, find this man. Rush him. I've warned you, Dr. Saruga. You warned me. 
At last, Shadow, you've met your match. What avails man's mind against a machine? I agree with you, Dr. Saruga. So I think we better eliminate the machine. Here, here. I caught me. What are you trying to do? I'm interested in knowing what's under your coat, Dr. Saruga. No, no. Robert. Robert, help me. Let me go. There, your robot doesn't move very swiftly, does he? Now there. Cut off. Well, an electrical control box. Don't touch that box. Don't touch it, I say. So that's your secret, Doctor. This contraption was a hump on your back. Which controlled the other robot that day at the fair. Give me that box. Oh, no, Doctor. You think you've gained the upper hand, eh? Shadow will assure you. You are still my prisoner in this room. You can't leave here and you won't ever leave here, ever. Where are your great powers now, Zaruga? I'll show you, I'll show you. I can operate the robot by hand. Keep away from that robot, Zaruga. Keep away. I'll show you. All I have to do is pick up this lever. No. No, 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 Robert. You misunderstood, not me. Not me, you fool. Help! He's got me! Let me go! Help! He's me! You feeling all right, Marco? Well, I guess so, thanks. But it does seem good to be out of that place. Yes. They're destroying Zaruga's robot. It's a pity in a way. Those mechanical gentlemen might be very serviceable if they were properly directed. Oh, you think so, huh? Well, after my little experience with the doctor and his mechanized murderer, I'll think twice in the future before I even use an electric toaster. Mm -hmm. 